What's up, fellas? I just finished up my AM session. So today was conventional deadlifts, and we're gonna get into this later, but I know I was, I, I said I wasn't gonna do my back session experiment, but I, I, me being me, we'll talk about that later. So it was back and deadlifts, and that's my AM session. Um, wanna start making a lot more of these videos where I go into the ins and outs of my training, just because quite honestly, I could forget a lot of the stuff that I think about that I want to share with you guys. And like I said, this is all just food for thought. It may or may not work for you. This is really going to resonate with a lot of people, but you know, it's just worth experimenting. Real quick though, y'all, the Gaines Goblin is not having a good day. Now, for those that don't know what that means, I heard it from Rich Piana a long time ago. I use it interchangeably with like girlfriend, wife, fiance, significant other. So if you want to use Gaines Goblin, that's how you use it. But they're not having a good day, good day today. I'm gonna to be headed to the store a little bit after this to go grab her some snacks. Kind of cheer her up. So, hey, do me a favor. In the comments down below, say, uh, hey, Gainsco, have a better day or something like that. I would appreciate it. She would appreciate it too. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about more of the ins and outs of my training. Like I said yesterday, there are a lot of things that I try with my training that honestly I would forget if I didn't make videos about them because I don't take a whole lot of notes other than just notating the sets and reps and weights that I use. I don't really talk too much in my notes about like how it felt, different things that I tried, like certain exercises that I do sometimes don't make it in like my, uh, my training sheet that I uh, use to keep track of my training. But we're gonna start off with a weighted calisthenics tidbit. Now, when you have accessories in your training programs, hey, how you doing? When you have accessories in your training programs, typically I like to say, just use something decent and just do reps across with it. So like do three sets of 10 with 90 pound dumbbells on dumbbell bench. I find that if you start off with something heavier on dumbbell bench, one, it's just not practical, right? So who does sets of three on dumbbell bench? Like, can you even do that? I don't know. It looks. It would probably feel and look stupid and pointless. But when you're doing weighted dips and weighted pull-ups, I find that one, they're more practical to do for lower reps, and two, they're not as fatiguing to do for lower reps. Because with a dumbbell bench, it's like a full body exercise to just even get it into position. And if you're using a load that you can only use like two or three reps with, or I don't know, some Sammy Sausage Head has probably tried to do a one rep max uh, dumbbell bench or something like that. You're gonna fatigue yourself a lot without actually working your chest, triceps, and shoulders. So you don't get that, they, and I'm looking for a non-giga brain way to say this, but in science, there's some nerd stuff called the post-activation potentiation. Basically, that's just the galaxy brain way of saying, you lift something heavy to make something lighter feel even lighter than it would have if you just started off with something lighter to begin with. So starting off with a heavier set of weighted pull-ups, makes your back down sets feel really, really good for hypertrophy. It's not quite pre-exhaustion, it just makes your muscles work harder and contract harder. Really good for performance too, so. If you're going to use weighted dips or weighted pull-ups or even weighted push-ups as an accessory, I do recommend starting off with a heavier top set. Maybe less so the weighted push-ups unless you had like a really good weighted vest, but definitely the weighted dips and the weighted pull-ups or chin-ups or whatever you do. Now, you do your threes, and then you do like, a, you know, a couple back down sets of eight, you know, to get that volume in your reps and sets in. So that's the way to calisthenics piece. Something that I did today, though, and I know I said in my last video that I wasn't going to do this, but me being me, I just was curious. So I didn't quite do a full scale back day like I talked about I was going to include in my next block and I was going to wait, but I didn't wait. But I did include a couple different back exercises and just, and just less sets. So I'm not doing like a full blown back day, but I'm touching a couple of different movements. I've found that doing weighted pull-ups directly after deadlifts, it's like I talked about yesterday, guys, that pre-exhaustion piece that I talked about yesterday is very, very effective. I did those conventional deadlifts and I did a set of eight with 470, and then like a set of 11 or 12, like back down set. And then directly after that, did my weighted pull-ups. 
started off with three plates for some reps and then I stripped down to two plates for reps. My upper back felt incredible. Directly after that, I moved into dumbbell rows and I'm like, what does Yvonne Jurek say? I'm onto something. Dude, I'm onto something with the post, uh, not post activation. Uh, the, the galaxy brain has infected my mind. The pre-exhaustion, you know, like I said yesterday, bet dollars for donuts, you do pre-exhaustion, you're gonna get jacked and get a good uh, bodybuilding stimulus. What I found with pre-exhaustion, and I could be totally wrong and I could be wasting my time, but what I'm finding is I do my strength work first, so I just do enough to ensure that I'm getting stronger. That's the main purpose of my training right now. I'm no longer in the bodybuilding saga. I'm trying to get stronger, you know, more absolute loads being lifted. I do enough of that to get stronger, but then I'm doing things to make my bodybuilding work more bodybuilding y, if that's even a term to use. Getting more out of less weight. What that's really cool for is that it leaves more Yvonne Jurek, again, recovery points to use on your strength work. So you're not using as much load, meaning your joints don't get beat up as much, and your tendons and all that stuff that causes you to need to deload more. So it's been really effective for me so far. That deadlift thing actually was like, I wasn't even purposely trying to pre-exhaust and it didn't even register in my head that, oh yeah, your upper back works on deadlifts. It might pre-exhaust it for pull-ups. But it worked out really well. Me being an unga bunga worked out really well. Speaking of deadlifts, something that I've found to be very effective for deadlift training, specifically for conventional pullers. I've said this in a few different videos but I'm a really big advocate for stiff leg deadlifts being your main deadlifting variation if you pull conventional. There's a couple reasons for that. One, you have to use a fraction of the load that you do on a conventional deadlift to give a really good stimulus to a lot of the prime movers in a conventional deadlift. So pretty much everything other than your quads and like your, your hip flexors to an extent. Uh, they're still recruited in a stiff leg deadlift, but they're not being recruited alongside the quads are in a stiff leg deadlift. On top of that, you're not doing things like slack pull and a few of the other things that you can do on a conventional deadlift to lift more weight. It's like the ultimate, what I call, self-limiting variation. You're literally just positioning your body in a way to make lighter loads feel way more challenging. There's another piece to it though, and this is where we have to differentiate between the RDL and stiff legged deadlift. I'm someone where I say they are essentially the same movement in the way that a pause bench press and a touch and go bench press are still bench presses. They're still both bench presses, guys. But there is a difference between the two and it starts to manifest when you look at strength training specifically and that's where we'll kind of talk about it. RDLs where you don't touch the floor essentially and you use a stretch reflex and there's no dead stop concentric component to it or superior for hypertrophy. I did them for a really long time. I was a very big advocate of them because they were the first like heavily loaded hip hinge that I looked to, like train with intensity, after I hurt my back really bad. I was at a point um, a couple years ago where conventional deadlifts or you know, really anything lower body were out of the question. So. It was a process mentally even incorporating anything lower body. But RDLs were the first thing that I turned to because I figured, hey, I'm not pulling it off the floor. It's less stressful on this nervous system overall. Less load is gonna be used. Let's see where this goes. And I ended up just running with it. They're not as good as stiff leg deadlifts for getting stronger. That's just the honest truth. The only reason being isn't necessarily from a bodybuilding perspective, because you, you, like I said, you arguably build more muscle doing RDLs. Sorry, I just had to admire my, um, I cut these sweaters by hand. So this was a sweater originally. I was getting too jacked for it, so I, I turned it into a tank top. But anyway, it's not for the bodybuilding part of it. It's simply because you're not pulling it off the floor. Rick De La Stick would be famous for saying, if you wanna get good at something, do more of that something. And anything that you do to supplement it, this is just me adding to it, should be close to that something. If you're pulling something off the floor, 
there's no starting from an eccentric phase like with an RDO. You're pulling it from the floor and you're just not ever doing that with a Romanian deadlift. So, you know, it, it just didn't give me the strength carryover for anything that I was looking for. Now, that's when I started to implement stiff-legged deadlifts and I was not changing anything other than the fact that I was just pulling the reps off the floor and each rep is just starting from the floor. Touching the floor, releasing, coming back up. That skyrocketed my strength across the board. Suddenly now my squats started feeling like poppier out of the bottom. Everything started to feel lighter. Conventional deadlifts started to feel like a joke. Doing more weight, more reps. And it makes sense guys because you're starting off the floor. So that's my little uh, thought piece on Romanian deadlifts versus stiff leg deadlifts. Basically, if you want to be a Johnny bodybuilder, do your RDLs. Excellent and honestly better for that purpose. But if you're looking for some measure of performance and strength on squats and deadlifts, stiff legged deadlifts are the superior variation. Now that's if you pull conventional. If you pull sumo, I would still say do your stiff legged deadlifts, but really low to the ground pause deadlifts are going to be better for you. See the gains goblin is texting me. I need to hurry up, guys. A couple other things I wanted to update you on. Seal rows. A lot of y'all know me to do seal rows. They are my favorite back exercise. And this isn't me like prefacing it by saying oh, I'm I'm breaking up with seal rows and this and that. But I've been experimenting with my Bells of Steel uh, arch nemesis bar. It's basically like a neutral bar with a McDonald's arch in the middle. It better makes sense. It's got a curve so you can get extra range of motion out of it. It is really, really good for presses and even for pulls. But what I found is on that most, like centermost grip, when I try to do seal rows, it, it's just too unstable because of the way it's built. So if you buy the Arch Nemesis bar and you do some kind of rowing or pressing with it, maybe consider using those wider grips. I don't know why it's more stable. It just is. But when I try to do seal rows with that Arch Nemesis bar, it's like you can't generate any force if at any moment your wrist can do that, you know what I mean? And then you could risk tweaking your wrist as well, which is like, for me, not scary, because it's like, whatever, if I break a bone, whatever. But I obviously don't want to keep re-injuring this same wrist, because I've broken this wrist right here a bunch of times. Um, and I just don't want to do that again, preferentially. So I'm going to stick to the outermost handles. Now, in terms of how that exercise has been working for me specifically, same thing with stiff-legged deadlifts. I find that it is so much better for raw upper back strength versus size if you start each rep from the floor. Now, you can still get a little bit of bodybuilding stimulus from it if you use a controlled eccentric, but you want to make sure that you're starting each of those reps from the floor so you get that dead stop concentric component. It makes you so much more explosive and so much more powerful in all your other back motions. Weighted pull-ups. Uh, freaking cable rows all that Johnny bodybuilder stuff feels way better when you have a dead stop rowing component and you can extrapolate that out to oh I don't have the setup for seal rows bought on the mat pen lay rows are really good if you have dumbbells you can do dumbbell rows where you're releasing dumbbell on the floor and you're pulling from the floor each rep um, there's a lot of different ways you can skin a cat and just pull something from the floor. Same thing as with the stiff-legged deadlifts. Just start from that dead stop component, and you're going to get a lot stronger for that. Short and sweet, like I said, I'm going to be making these pretty often, y'all, because otherwise it'd be me texting Sam, uh, Sam Sheath, or like, hey, bro, I just tried this out. What do you think? We get really excited talking about training. Um, let me know if y'all have any questions about what we talked about today. Um, tomorrow's a rest day. Oh, I have a PM session. I almost forgot. So I may be updating you guys with another, you know, bro talk, training, meathead session a little later tonight. It's just going to depend upon what time of night it is when we finish up. Because I'm going to be going to the gym with the Gaines Goblin. I know she can't be a Gaines Goblin if she goes to the gym, but I uh, figured it'd be a nice opportunity to bond in the iron paradise a little bit. As I said, um, please wish her 
a, a better day because like i said she's feeling a little under the weather not feeling the greatest not in the best spirits so i would appreciate that y'all have a good one